Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to discuss an intervention that we may often use to direct load into the distal hamstrings by manipulating the behaviour of the tibia, okay? And we're going to also discuss very briefly what you may see in clients that may need a strategy like this, where they need load directed into the distal hamstrings. Not by necessarily using the intervention that we we're going to discuss here straight away, but we may progressively load and work towards this intervention, okay? So what you're going to see in the video here on the left-hand side is you're going to see a representation of uncontrolled tibial extension, okay? And I'm, I'm well aware that uncontrolled tibial extension is a very vague um, statement, but you'll see in the video here, it's a really exaggerated example of very, very quick tibial extension during the stance phase of gait, okay? So again, just to... to you know, encourage you to consider here that it is it is a very, very exaggerated example here. But what we ideally want to see here, when the individual progresses their body weight, progresses their head, arms, and trunk over the, the stance foot, is we want to see a slight maintenance of tibial flexion to maintain that load through the, the metatarsal heads. That will make it easier for, easier for us to be able to plantar flex and propel our body weight forward, okay? In order to maintain some level of tibial flexion, we do, we do need good load capacity through the distal quadriceps. We need good load capacity through the distal hamstrings to decelerate any kind of knee extension. But of course, we do need good load capacity in the ankle plantar flexors as well to actually shift that workload into the metatarsal heads. And so there's a, a coordination of workload across these muscles, more muscles than just the three that I've outlined there. But again, it's about the coordination particularly when we're <clears throat> particularly when we're looking at more of a multi-joint movement strategy here. But what you're going to see here is you're going to see that very, very quick snap back into tibial extension there, where the tibia snaps back and the weight shifts from the metatarsal heads <clears throat> into the heel. Okay. So when the meta when the weight shifts from, from the metatarsal heads into the heel, then it's going to be very difficult for us to be able to propel our body weight forward via the ankle. Okay. And you're typically going to see this more proximal trunk leading strategy where we're driving our mass forward through the proximal structures, particularly the, the spinal extensors you'll often see. Okay. So one of the key muscles that we need to, um, you know, consider here as a limitation from a low capacity standpoint are the distal hamstrings because they will cross the knee and attach into the, uh, into the tibia and decelerate the extension of the, the tibia in addition to the, the, the proximal gastroc as well, okay? So if you're seeing a, a, a walking pattern like this, and again, like I said, this is a very exaggerated example, there's other assessments that you may use, not just observing the client's walking mechanics, uh, but there's other assessments you may use to determine whether or not the distal hamstrings need that load capacity. But one of the strategies that we might use, <clears throat> excuse me, is, it, is this strategy here, which is a clip from a recent level one course in Hong Kong, where we can position the forefoot on a foam roller with the, the pelvis in more of a bridge position. So the pelvis is hovering from the, from the ground here, and we have the knee in a position of flexion. And what we're doing here, what the therapist is doing here is asking the client to maintain that pelvic bridge, maintain that, that force through the, the forefoot, through the metatarsal heads. And the therapist is then going to quite apply a quick perturbation of, of by moving the foam roller towards him, which will try to move the tibia into extension, okay? So that quick movement of the foam roller will try and quickly move the tibia into extension, which is going to increase the, the reactive capacity of the distal hamstrings to be able to prevent that from happening, okay? So you're gonna see that in the video here. So you see the, the therapist is maintaining that position, The because um, again, these are a group of therapists. Obviously, if you're working with your clients, you may have to slowly work towards this, um, because it is a very, very challenging strategy. You can see the, the therapist here in this video can't really hold this for longer than five to six perturbations. But what we can do is we can, of course, manipulate the position of the knee, the starting position of the knee, okay? Because again, we can, you know, we're in charge and obviously the, the, th the, the client in question and, and their low capacity will dictate what position you start in. So of course, if you start in a, in a greater position of knee flexion, it may be a little bit easier, but then as you move towards more knee extension, the tibia is going to be biased towards more tibial extension. As the knee extends, the tibia will extend. Okay, the knee is just a representation of the interaction between bony segments, the femur, the tibia, and the, the patella. 
So to progress things, we can pre-position the client in more knee extension and then apply the same perturbations. But this is one of the benefits of, of using a foam roller for these bridging strategies is because we can apply this perturbation and really challenge and, and direct that load into the distal hamstrings to prevent or decelerate that tibial extension. Okay. So again, just one intervention that we may work towards using in clients that have poor load capacity into the distal hamstrings or may demonstrate a walking pattern like this. You, don't, you won't certainly start with this intervention, but again, it's a good intervention to work towards. For example, you may start using more kind of static holes, isometric positions on the foam roller here, but adding those perturbations to the foam roller to try and pull the tibia quickly into extension can be an amazing strategy to direct more load into the distal hamstrings at speed.